All right, guys, today I want to discuss how we go from getting our load to getting it on the truck. How we decided where we're going to put this load, why we put it in the spots that we did, and the different thought process of what we need to do when deciding how to uh, do a load like this. I'll see you guys in a minute. All right, guys, what's going on? Today I want to discuss uh, picking, not, not picking, but uh, deciding where we're going to put everything when we get a load um the, this this right here is the load sheet that i got and let me get my pen here and this right here if you guys can see this or not this is what i got on this load um what's yeah you look at the right side this is what i got on or, or from carvana this is my load that I just loaded. We'll go outside and we'll look at the load here in a minute. This is the load that I just got um, going back to, over to Georgia. I uh, loaded this out of Texas. We're running across the south, across 20. Um, and it's a, it's a very easy load. Uh, but it, it kind of gives us, well, it gives us a variety of vehicles that we can discuss how we could load it. And I'll show you guys how I did load it. Um, so to start off, if you guys can see here, we have, I gotta zoom in too. We got an F-150, a Grand Caravan, and a Ridgeline. Though, those are the three big vehicles that are gonna, that we need to decide on first where we're gonna put things. Again, um, mo like I said, most of the stuff is easy, and, and if we had a lot more SUVs, it'd be a little more challenging, but this is a pretty simple load, because we did end up having three fairly small actually three very small cars um so we could kind of put anything just about anywhere um but the the big thing you always want to look at is if you have a truck you need to decide where you're putting that before you do any of the load um and there there are if you're just loading one truck there's a bunch of places you could put them on most trailers um and, and this is we're going to be discussing on the 80 foot here because that's what I have to show you guys. But for the most part, the pickup truck, depending on how tall you can run, if you have a sleeper and you put it over the front of your head rack, I'm pretty sure you're going to be about 14, 14, 2 without chains and without taking air out of the tires. Um, you could get lower and depending on which part of the country you're in, the heights that you're allowed to run, that's for you to decide, not me to tell you. Um, on a day cab like this, I can get a F-150 over the top of my head rack on the very front of this truck, down to height, piece of cake. Um, but I actually put the F-150 on spot six. We'll just show you no real reason other than that's where I wanted to put it. Just easy spot to throw it on. Uh, easy on easy off and it kind of evened out my weight because I, I tried to load my cab a little heavy um, but originally my original plan was and it was the first vehicle I pulled out was I wanted to put the ridge line on number one and the F-150 on number two behind my cab and I was just gonna throw one of these CT 200 H's under the truck uh, or in spot three behind the cab um, I would have been able to get down to height easily with all of that. The problem that I had is with the ridge line, it was only a two-wheel drive. So therefore, you don't ever want to put a two-wheel drive uh, vehicle or a two-wheel drive truck into your pockets if you have to open them up to get down to height um, because it's, it's not going to come out easily. Uh, you're going to either have to uh, put a strap on it and pull it out or you're gonna be spinning your tires a lot and hoping and praying you can finally get it up out of those pockets um, So I pulled the ridge line out that was a two-wheel drive. So scratch everything. I uh, Sorry truck just turned off um, So I ended up putting the ridge line on spot number seven, which is the tongue position underneath um, but the way I actually had this load, the way I have this loaded, is I put the Outlander on number one, the Grand Caravan on number two, over the top of the CX-5. Um, mostly because I wanted to keep the length of the Grand Caravan off of the trailer when I'm already putting two 
longer vehicles on, which is the Ridgeline and the F-150, to save space. You don't, you don't want to load your trailer too long and you won't be able to turn leaving a parking spot because of the fact that you, uh, you're too close between your head rack, the top of your head rack and the front of your trailer. So then underneath, uh, wait, wait, I got myself confused there. Um, so that's the way I loaded the cab. And then on the trailer, I went the little tiny uh, i3 BMW, tiny little electric car on the front over the tongue. Um, and the Lexus, the Lexus CT200H, uh, which is that little hatchback Lexus, um, up in the middle on top of the trailer on number five with the pickup truck on the back, made it nice and easy to come down to height. Put that ridge line down in number seven. Behind that is our RAV4. And then the other Lexus on the bottom under the truck. Um, and really, it all came down to height easily. This wasn't a difficult load, like I said. But I, I just want to show you, I usually take, if I get a sheet like this or if it's on my phone, um, I, I try to look at what the load is and pick out my biggest vehicles. Decide where they're going to go first and then build my load around those. Uh, and that's kind of the best way, in my opinion, to do it because you don't want to start throwing cars on the head rack and then realize, oh wait, I needed to put this vehicle over the front because now I'm either too heavy on the trailer or I can't get down to height. Um, so you, you, want, you want to kind of even your weight out. For me, my heaviest vehicles I have on the load is going to be that Outlander, the van, the two trucks. So what, the way I did it was heavy, heavy on the top of the truck, heavy on the tongue down underneath, and heavy on the very back of the trailer, kind of evening it all out across the entire rig. So that way I know I'm not gonna be over axle on any of my, uh, on any of my axles on the truck. Um, the other thing to think about is coming down to height. You need to decide, okay, cars can be placed anywhere. Usually you're gonna place a car above or below a big vehicle. Uh, for me, I knew I needed one of the two Lexuses under the F-150. No matter where I put it on the rig, that was where I had to, that, that was the way I was gonna to have to load it was with one of those cars underneath. Um, I probably could have gotten the RAV4 down under the F-150 um, if I could pull the truck up a little bit further and open up the truck pockets on the back of the truck and on the back of the trailer. But why, why, I guess, take the chance of it not working when I know I can just do it this way and everything's gonna be fine, no questions asked. But let's run outside real quick. I'm gonna show you guys the load, how it ended up being. All right guys, so as you can tell, this is the load that we have on today. It's a nine car load with a pickup truck, well, with two pickup trucks and a minivan. Uh, all kinds of things that you need to think about when deciding how we're going to load one of these loads. Um, for me, when we're doing one of these, when we're just loading any load at all, the first thing I always try to do is pick out what my biggest vehicle is. My biggest vehicle is obviously the pickup truck. We have a second one, which is just a ridge line. It's a smaller version of a truck, but it's still technically a truck. It's a little longer than most SUVs and a little bit taller. Um, so personally, like I said a minute ago, I originally wanted to put the Ridgeline here, the pickup truck here, over one of the Lexuses, and then I was gonna put the, uh, I was gonna go car, car, then uh, the minivan, two SUVs, and my last car. That would have been, oh, no, I would have gone three SUVs across the bottom, two cars, and the minivan up top. Um, but with that Ridgeline being a two-wheel drive, I wouldn't have been able to get it out of the pockets on the front of the truck, so that's why we had to load it down here. But this is something I want to discuss with you guys um, when we're loading down here. This is about as far forward as you want the front bumper. You can probably come, I would say, no further than the, the front bumper here, coming right up to about where that no-step uh, symbol is. Uh, that way when you turn you're not going to drive the back end of your trailer into the front fender of your truck But as you can tell, I mean everything's down to height nice and easy 
this one here we have the roof rack on this SUV which is why we have it in this position to tilt it down get it under everything we probably could have put that uh, the RAV4 up top and been fine because I think actually my, my tallest vehicle is this minivan which is at like 13.2 um, I dropped this down and uh, set my pins when I grabbed my height stick everything down including that pickup truck was way under 13.6 my uh, my height stick when I uh, measure it up at there when I lift it up to 13.6 it didn't touch any of these vehicles but this is kind of the way that I like to load it um, this right here back your car in what I normally do because this is a front wheel drive I put the front tires I leave the shotgun all the way out I put the front tires on that deck and then I just use the shotgun to bring it into where I want so that way I know I obviously have enough space I'm not gonna run my bumper into anything and I got enough height on my head rack here none of this is gonna be close it's pretty I mean as you can tell there's tons of space here and I could have lifted it up even more if I really needed to um, but this this whole load came down pretty easily it's nothing like I keep saying it, it's nothing difficult but you just kind of want to decide where you're putting your vehicles so that way you're you're not overloading because let me back up here my heavy vehicles like i said are going to be the grand caravan the ridge line and the truck my heaviest suv is going to be that outlander so that's why you kind of go heavy 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 most of the time that's kind of the way i try to load um because it, 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 like I said, it, it evens the weight out across the entire truck. So therefore, uh, you don't have to worry about the scales and getting dinged being overweight, which it happens to some of us, but try, try not to let it happen. But um, yeah, guys, I mean, really, that's all I got. Guys, I appreciate you watching the video. Smash that like button if you uh, haven't already. Also, subscribe to the channel. It helps out with my YouTube algorithm. So this, these type of videos get out to everybody. And uh, also, in the links below, is always the same normal stuff. If you want the investing apps or you want to hear any of the music that's ever in my videos, they're down below. Check it out. And guys, I will see you on the next one. Thanks.